Well, greetings once again to Where It Be. This here is a, another uh, uh, few scriptures. I'm going to try to limit it to uh, uh, just uh, three or four different places in the Holy Scriptures, maybe five or six, depending. But uh, as I read these things, I'd like to also put a little bit of input uh, as far as what our King has revealed to me over the many years I've been seeking and searching and and uh, following him in the truth that he's revealed through the scriptures. So basically what uh, we do on these, if you watched my first video you know, but I just want to recap that I'm just going to basically read off scriptures from the Holy Scriptures. And you can do this at any time yourself, okay? This is great fun for family and friends, you know, when they come over at a Bible study or anything. Just pick it up, just open to any page if you want and start reading a scripture. Uh, of course, in front of them, they'll see whether you're a quarter way into the book or through most of the book, you know, where you're quoting from, and it'll help them give it a little idea, but I'm keeping the scriptures down here so you don't see where they're actually at. Uh, they could either be from the alleged old or the alleged new testament. But I'm going to uh, hope that you know where these scriptures are. It'll be ideal if you do. Uh, of course, most of these scriptures aren't read in churches around America or the world today, because if they were, uh, Christians really wouldn't be Christians, whether you're a Baptist or a Catholic or a Presbyterian or Protestant or Buddhist or whatever. If these were actually read in churches, you may not be those things anymore, but you'd probably want to become a member in our king's body. Uh, the body of Yahshua in these last days. So anyway, I'm going to start out the reading here. And you tell me where it's at. It's going to be from verses uh, this until verse that. But it's going to be a little bit lengthy. Uh, give you plenty of time to think about where it's at. But I want to reveal a couple things in here to you that you just don't know. Because your preachers most likely don't know the truth about it either. But anyway, it starts out, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh. And, of course, you know, I'm not going to be saying Lord and God and Jesus and such in here. I'm going to, it's a natural thing in my mind because uh, the names are written in my heart and my mind as I read even in these books because you don't, you don't have Bibles out there, really, that have the sacred name unless you pay an exorbitant amount <laughs> for it. You know, in some places they don't even have, you know, whether it's the Father or the Son in the correct place. But, you know, the Word's in us, and it's being burned into your heart and your inward parts. That's part of the New Covenant, which is where the law will be burned into your inward parts. It'll be written, it'll be etched and inscribed there. But I hope that every word also is. So anyway, let's start over again, and you tell me where this is at, or tell your friends. Impress everybody. Impress yourself, especially. And even more so, our king. Yeah, he's the one that wants to be impressed. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh, and those who hear will live. So those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And that's how he laid his life down and he took his life back up because the Father gave him life in himself, something we really don't have. It's something that was given to our, our Father's Son, our King. And the only way we can get to our Father is through our King. But there's more to just believing in his name. He says, And has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good or righteous to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. So it shows a little something here, okay? 
you've got those that will be resurrected to life and we're mortal right now so when we die we go to the grave the worms eat us and whatever fish or you know if we're buried in the ocean you know the sharks eat us whatever but the thing is we don't have life everlasting yet in order to get those you have to keep the commandments you know as it shows in the new testament you got to keep the commandments if you want life but this life here is given to those who have believed all along well maybe not so all along but they did choose to believe what these scriptures say but those that did evil those that did not walk according to what these scriptures say they were raised for judgment but those for life they've been judged already as they walk through these uh, crooked paths of this life you know and try to stay on the right path in the right way there's only one way and one path that you can have for salvation and it shows here that those rays that did right they don't even have a judgment they're just brought into life but those who did evil they will be judged to to figure out whether they're going to spend eternal life in the uh fiery pits of hell you know uh, gehenna that were made for satan and the adversaries or minions and those that follow her uh that's going to be figured out after the raise from the dead these wicked ones like hitler and and all these others you know and I, I i really don't mean to just point out hitler i mean there's been plenty you know like my great grandfathers and such you know that have done wickedly they didn't do according to this word so they're going to be raised to find out whether they'll be blessed enough to be burned into ashes on that day uh, which is also in uh, my first video on where it be okay it talks about those in that day will be burned to ashes that's when this takes place after our king comes back even though it's found in the alleged old testament it's still yet to come and they'll be raised for judgment to see whether they become uh, fertilizer for carrots and beets and root crops you know these ashes or whether they will spend their entire eternity given life at that time because no mortal has been given life not until the resurrection and after uh, except maybe uh, Enoch as some say but I don't even know if that was true but anyway uh, they'll be raised for judgment these evil ones uh, furthering I can do nothing of my own authority as I hear I judge and my judgment is just, uh, just because I seek not my own will but the will of him who sent me so as you see here even our king when he was alive and walking on the earth before he was uh, some want to say transmuted or translated or whatever anyway he had laid his life down he picked his life back up and he is now ruler and king of kings and ruler of rulers over the entire universe everything our father owned he put into his hands uh, so that he could take care of us he's in charge of all the stars and the moon the sun everything uh, and he says if I bear witness to myself my testimony is not true there is another who bears witness of me and I know that the testimony which he bears to me is true you sent to John or Yachanan and he has borne witness to the truth now the truth of course many don't know but when you look up in the scripture it, def it defines itself and it says that his word the every word right here that our messiah became he became the living word every word is truth lies are things that preachers do today and they they tell you all these funny stories about how you die and you go to heaven or you go to hell or purgatory or wherever else there is and if that was true why would Cain's, you know after he killed uh, abel's blood cry up out of the ground was our father a deceiver and said hey Cain why do I hear the blood of Abel instead of saying hey Abel's right next to me up here Cain why in the world you you, you knock his head in with a stick okay so because Abel wasn't with our father 
He only heard the blood coming, crying out of the ground, because that's where the life is, is in the blood. So if you die and go to heaven, why didn't our Creator, with the first one, should have gone to heaven? Abel, I mean, he was, he was doing completely righteous. He was keeping the laws and the commandments that started to be kept because Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, you know, and they opened their mind to one law. And because of that, all the others they was breaking brought sin onto their lives. So, therefore, they came under that judgment. But anyway... It says, you sent to John, or Yachanan, he is born witness to the truth. Not that the testimony which I receive is from man, but I say this, that you may be saved. Our king is saying this. Okay, well, I gave away. This here scripture is from the alleged New Testament. Okay. And our Messiah, our King, Yahshua says, he's saying this so that you may, may, could be, might be, saved. Now, I know you got preachers out there, and no disrespect to you, Paul Begley, and, and all these others. I've written Paul many times saying, why do you say you saved these people when you haven't even told them what brings salvation? Please explain it to these people. Now, Paul's never written me back, and I've never heard him say, you have to do these things for salvation. Paul preaches, all you got to do is believe. Well, he never tells you what you have to believe. Did your preacher tell you what you have to believe? Well, you figure out where this is at, and we're going to show you what you need to believe if you really want to be saved, like our king just said here. He says... But I say this that you may be saved. Where it be? You figure it out yet? Furthering, he was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his, his light. But the testimony which I have is greater than that of Yachanan or John, for the works which the Father has granted me to accomplish, holy bovine. Man, is there any wonder why this isn't taught in the churches? Because our Messiah did works. And what them works do? <laughs> he gave him salvation. Not only gave him salvation, but we became his brothers and sisters, children of our Father, when we do works. Now, I know it sounds horrible to every Christian out there playing this game right now because, you know, works, wow, you do works, man. You deny grace, which is three daughters of Zeus dancing naked, you know, which actually should have been defined as a pardon and acquittal. That's what grace actually means. It doesn't mean one of three or three of Zeus's daughters that he named all the same name, Grace, and they dance naked together. That's not what I'm looking for, okay? But when I sin, I do hope I get a pardon and acquittal of that sin. But the thing is, Paul Bagley and the others don't tell you what sin is. We'll get into that, you know, because you're going to find it in here. That That's part of the game. You, where it be, okay? Where it be at here, are these scriptures. And he says, These very works which I am doing bear me witness that the Father has sent me. So he's made a witness because he did these works. <laughs> the very things that condemn you, I guess, from what most Christians teach. In fact, I had a real dear friend, Michael, man, he, he came over and I explained to him about the laws. and Well, his wife got all concerned and everything and everybody else, so Michael hasn't been around here for, oh, months. He's scared to come, I guess, because I showed him in the scripture where these works you have to do, you know, regardless of what your preacher tells you. So you show me where it be here that I'm reading. Furthering, and the Father who sent me has himself borne witness to me. His voice you have never heard. Wow. That was pretty hard. This was what our king was saying to these scribes and Pharisees and everybody else up there. He says, His voice you have never heard. 
his form you have never seen and you do not have his word abiding in you for you do not believe him who has sent me <laughs> I bet that went over like a balloon in a in a porcupine fest I'll tell you what then he says can you tell me where it be you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have this eternal life and it is they what bear witness to me yet you refuse to come to me <laughs> where it be he says this where's our king say this he's talking to you too if you don't keep the commandments and the laws that define how to keep the commandments he's asking you this question you should at least know where it be in the scriptures that he's asking you this yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life so when you're resurrected you're either resurrected to life or you're resurrected to judgment because those that are living are being judged right now believe you me with tests and trials like you wouldn't believe uh, all the Christians are still waiting for persecutions to come about I tell you they've been here over 35 years I could tell you that in my life I'm 58 and every day my first day here well third day I was swapped in the hospital and almost killed okay but we were swapped back and the other baby died instead but yeah persecutions are here for those who choose to do what's right it says I do not receive glory from men but I know that you have not the love of Yahweh within you. See, the love. Now, I will tell you, in Second John or Second Yachin, it, it does say, And I beseech ye now, lady, that you love. And he says, And this is love, that you keep his commandments. So, it's showing right here that you don't have and he's, he, of course he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees back in those days and he says but I know that you have not the love or the commandments now they had traditions and that's what our king was whooping their butts about all the time their traditions all your traditions if you'd only keep the law if you keep the word if you'd love our father you know it'd be different but he says but I know that you have not the love, the commandments of Yahweh within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, Jimmy Swagger, you know, all these uh, Peter Popovs and, and all these other fellows that come in their own names, well, they've got thousands and millions of followers. And they all believe the same hogwash, okay? Because they came in their own name and they believe them. But because our king came in his father's name, they didn't believe him. But if he came in his own name preaching his own little doctrines, well, he'd have all kind of followers. And think about it. One time you had 4,000 people, men, not counting the women and children. Another time 5,000 men, not counting women and children, came. He fed them with a couple fishes and loaves of bread. And fed them all, got back more basket full of scraps than he started out with to begin with. But how many actually believed the whole time he was here preaching? And this might blow your mind, but it shows how many actually believed the truth of those that received the message were about 120 on that day of Pentecost. Now on the outside, there were maybe 100 or two more men and women and children that also believe because they heard the crumbs, they ate the crumbs that fell from the children's table, and they was also there where the disciples were, even uncircumcised men, and they got baptized, okay, afterwards. And the Holy Spirit started falling on everybody after that day. But there was only about 120 out of all the people our king preached to. And they accepted him, so they said, about 120 were there. That's it. So all the others didn't believe. So the thousands and thousands that claim they did, only a handful made it to that day. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. 
How can you believe who receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only Father? Do not think. Now, this second time he's saying, do not think. Don't, don't let it enter your mind. Don't contemplate it. Don't discern it. Don't consider it. Don't think. Don't think. First time he tells you is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, where he says, Do not think I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. Okay, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And, and all the preachers out there, most of them anyway, want to say fulfill means done away with. Well, actually, no. Fulfill actually means to fully preach, to manifest, to bring about, to bring to light, to fully preach. <laughs> and that's what fulfill means, okay? He came to fully preach so that we could walk just as he walked. If you don't, you're not going to make it. You're going to be one of those raised for judgment and not one raised for life because you've already been tested and tried. He says, Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. It is Moshe or Moses who accuses you. Which means, you know, the laws and commandments. Moses wrote about these things. And, and who better to judge someone than someone who knows the laws and commandments. And that's who these scribes and Pharisees trusted in. They, they trusted in Moshe. But Moshe wrote about these laws and commandments. If you break them, you're going to end up just like those children in the wilderness that disobeyed. None of them made it into the promised land. And neither will you. So he says, it is Moses, or Moshe, who accuses you, on whom you set your hope. Now, this is very important, and, and maybe if you actually know where this is at, it'll help click it in there better, and if you haven't read it before, because certainly you haven't heard about it in the church, you'll remember when you look this up, because where it be? If you believed Moshe or Moses. If you believed Moses, you would have believed me. Our king's saying this. If you believed Moses, then you would believe me. Now you got these scribes and Pharisees claiming that they're teaching Moses. And our king's saying, if you knew him, if you believed Moses, then you'd believe me. And we know they didn't. They nailed him to a tree or a pole, okay, a stake, with his hands above his head and the nails through his wrists, not through his hands like the effeminate goddess on the crosses today or days long ago. But anyway, he says, if you believed Moshe, Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. Now this is real important. This will knock you in the head in a place you want to look in your scriptures so you could ask your preacher, why didn't you ever teach us to me? Okay? He says, But if you do not believe his writings, Moshe's writings, Moses' writings, if you don't believe his writings, how will you believe my words? If you don't believe Moses, how do you know that what I'm saying is true to begin with. And if you don't believe Moses, if you don't believe his writings, the commandments, the statutes, the ordinances, then neither will you know my language. You can't hear me. Okay? That was the first one that where it be needs to be defined. Now hopefully you'll be able to uh, uh, read your scriptures and tell me you found it. Hopefully, you actually already knew it. Now, here's something else that our king said. And I only say that, you know, I give away that it's not in the alleged Old Testament where this is found. But this goes on to show about the commandments, which you probably have disagreed with me every time I say, Oh, works? You gotta do works? Well, you know, the wages of sin is death, which means you have to do works to make it into the eternal flames. you got to work at sin. 
Sin is work. Keeping the commandments isn't a work. When you know them, you just don't do it. It's, it's like, you know, if you're changing the baby's diapers, do you stick your fingers in it? And ee, ee, ee. No, you don't do that because you probably did once and said, forget this stuff. I, ain't, I don't want that on my fingers anymore, especially if you're baking cookies, you know. So you avoid it. It doesn't even come to your mind. It's, it's not a work to keep your fingers out of that mess. It's a work to stick your fingers in it. You got to make yourself do that unless it's done by accident. But otherwise, you got to work at it. Okay? So the wages of sin is death. And I'm not saying sticking your fingers in the poo is a sin. It really doesn't say that. As long as you got water, running water and you don't smear it on everything, it's supposed to be buried, all that kind of stuff. But it's really not a sin if your fingers get stuck in there. But to put your fingers there, you really have to work at it. So sin is just like something I'm trying to describe. It's something you have to work at. When I don't commit adultery, I'm not sweaty. I don't have concerns or worries whether the husband's ever going to find me. These are works. Works is making up the lies to cover for the wife that took a few hours, well, today a few minutes, you know, duck in an alley, whatever, to commit fornication. You know, it, it only takes moments of work, okay, for an adulterous act. You could think it in your heart, and you're guilty of sin, okay? It's an adulterous act. It's something you have to work at. But my point is, when I don't commit adultery, and I don't think about it, okay? It, it's farthest thing from my mind as there is. I don't have to think about it. So where's the work in not committing adultery? I don't steal, no matter how hard it is. I could have a flat tire right next to a tree with a couple tires wrapped on it with a rope that's the same size as my car and brand new. I'm not going to steal them. I don't have to work at it. But to steal them, I'd have to work at stealing them. So the wages of sin is death. So as far as you all think in these works, you know, is, is denying grace, well you're listening to your preacher too much and you ought to start figuring out where it be okay now now here's something else that you need to to answer where this be blessed are those who wash their robes okay now this here is from this uh, revised standard version but what I want to do is show you what it says actually in the King James Version, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. Oh. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. There's that life word again. And may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and now please pay attention close to this okay and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie oh Santa's coming Oh, yeah, children, hurry up, get to bed, because Santa's coming. He's going to slide right on down the chimney. Oh, and leave out some of these sacrifices to Saturn, or Satan, cookies and milk. But he preferred to eat his own children. But leave out cookies and milk, and oh, he'll give you so many gifts. I mean, come on, man. Is that the truth? You bought those gifts and put Santa on the label for these children, and yet you think you're saved, but it, it, it tells you right straight out. It says, for without, it says, blessed are they that do his commandments. Now I'll read it from this one. It says, because, you know, the versions, they have different things they say. It says, blessed are those who wash their robes. Okay, so well, 
How do you think this number that no man can count is going to come out in these last days? They wash their robes. Right? Well, here it says to wash your robes, but in the King James Version it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. That is what washing your robes is. Is doing the commandments. And you can only do the commandments by keeping the 613 laws that define how the Ten Commandments must be kept. So there's ten things really to do to get into the kingdom. It's defined through 613 similar uh, ways to do each one of the commandments. Okay, so we've got 600 and maybe 23 things that you actually got to do condensed you may only have 150 things you got to do because some of them laws you got to keep may be pertaining to merchants well if you're not a merchant then you don't have to worry about the honest scales and measures merchants do but you don't have to if you're a man and not a woman well there's many things a woman's got to do in the laws to keep purity, to keep from contaminating the world, which Isaiah 24 verses 1 through 6 talk about, you know, and it shows, you know, the reason why these, this tribulation and terrible times are coming to begin with is because you broke the laws and the commandments, the statutes, the ordinances, the very things like it says, blessed are they who do his commandments. Now, where is, where that be in these scriptures? Let's go to the next one here, which you may not care for much because it actually is a spiritual test. <coughs> and I've used this many times on demons and such that's running around the world, you know, and I, I chase them out using these scriptures because if they can't say they do, then you know who they are. They're not of the Father, okay? And this may blow your mind, but you tell me where it be, because the churches aren't going to teach you this. And you need to take this test as I read it yourself. Everybody fails, kind of like watching The Matrix, where Neil's up there, jumps off the top of the building, hits the parking lot, boom, you know, the road, you know, got a bloody nose. and everything. Well, this is probably going to bloody your nose, too, okay? Because you're thinking that you're a Christian, your preacher said you're saved, he baptized you, but never told you what you got to do. All he said is, oh, you're saved. But for what? The fire? <laughs> I mean, that's what the scripture says. Saved for the fire. But anyway, you tell me where it be. My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin. So that you may not sin. Oh, so we're not supposed to sin, is he saying? I wonder, because Christians say that you can't do works, you can't keep the laws. Because if you do, then you're sinning because you're denying grace. But here they say, and this is after our king, you know, did die, and after he rose himself from the dead. Okay? Just like our father had life in himself, he gave it to the son, and the son raised himself from the dead on that third day. And he taught his disciples after his death. And his disciples didn't walk around saying, Oh, hey, the laws are done away with, fellas. You ain't got to do nothing. You know, fornicate with your neighbors and steal your, you know, your neighbor's lawnmower. It's completely okay. In fact, that's what the kingdom's going to be like. No, they never taught this because it was a lie that the preachers are teaching today. This is what they taught after our king raised from the dead and still taught the disciples even more so than he did when he was living with them. And listen to what the disciples are saying our king had taught them because that's how they knew this. That's how they knew it to write it down by guidance of the Holy Spirit. It says, my little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin. I don't want you to sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahshua the righteous. And he is the expiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And we'll get into what sin is here in a minute. You're going to have to show me where it be. 
and by this we may be sure that we know him okay now this is getting into that spiritual test this is how you know if you are in the king Yahshua Messiah or even if you're in our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, or what a lot of people like to say is Jehovah, uh, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, and, and all these other silly things. His name is Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. -H, that's how it's pronounced. And this is how you know if you know him or even our king, because our king and our father are one. They're two separate beings. They are one. It wasn't our father came down to earth got baptized and then threw his voice oh this is my son in whom I am well pleased and everyone thought that you know the father would I mean come on seriously the father spoke to the son they're two totally different people or entities and our son says this through his disciple Yachanan he says and by this we may be sure that we know him if we keep his commandments <laughs> man he keeps talking about these commandments but how these churches got people to believe that the commandments are so bad and you can't do it otherwise you're doing works and you'll be denying zeus's three na naked dancing daughters who dance together you know you're denying them if you keep oh if you don't have fornication with your neighbor's wife well well you're denying grace oh so you better not keep them laws no more but what preacher wants his wife to be laid with by the congregation? You know, I mean, they're hypocrites. He who says, I know him. Now, do you know him? Do you say, I know him? This is where you're going to fall down flat. But disobeys his commandments. Now listen to what he says to you. Even though you might have a bloody nose right now, this is really great. Show me where it be. He who says, I know him, and but disobeys his commandments, is a liar. So if you're not keeping his commandments, and you say that you know him, you're a liar. And it says so, right? Where it be? Where it be that it says this? Because your preacher ain't showed this to you, has he? And the truth is not in him or her. Those who say, I know him, and don't keep his commandments are liars, and there's no truth in you. I'm sorry, but it, this is where it be. You show me. Where it be. Show me I'm a liar. It says, I know, uh, but you says, I know him, but disobeys his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But, whosoever keeps his word and in here the word this this book the word the commandments is part of that word it really in fact it's the whole word okay the laws and commandments but it says straight out but whoever keeps his word in him truly love the commandments love for Yahweh is perfected and you got all these preachers out there. oh you can't be perfect though Matthew 5 the last verse in that chapter says to be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect here it says that the commandments this word if it's in you it makes you perfected it it says it but your preachers tell you don't because they're liars because they don't have this word in them that's why this spiritual test. And you got a black eye and a bloody nose from this already. But it's okay. You can get over it. All right. You can repent and just get up and walk. By this we may be sure that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way. Now our king came. He kept the commandments and the laws. He never taught against them. He died keeping them. He even forgave those when he was nailed to that tree. Forgive these that done this to me. Forgiveness is a law. <laughs> now your preacher says you can't keep if you want one of Zeus's naked dancing daughters. He 
He who says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Where it be. Okay, I'll, want me to start with the very first couple words again? My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin. Okay, so you may not sin. Where it be? All right, let's take a look here in another place. And you show me where it be. Tell your friends you got it. I hope you do. I hope you do. If not, look it up and, and you'll have it forever. But let's take a look at this bad baby. It says, and you show me where it be. No one born of Yahweh, it says God there, but you know. No one born of Yahweh commits sin. Now I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm born again. I'm born of the Father. I'm born of the Son. Born. Well, the thing is, those who are born of the Father, they commit no sin. For Yahweh's nature abides in him, and he cannot sin. <laughs> Yeah, there are those on the earth today that cannot sin because they've been practicing these laws and commandments so much that when they see it, they reject it. No, I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that. They cannot sin because they already know what sin is and they know what sin brings is death. It's wages, you know, for the sins that you have to work at in order to acquire death. So I'm going to back up a little bit. I just wanted a little prelude to show you here. And you show me where it be. It's in this holy book. You show me where it be. But I want you to know what sin is. It says, Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Now, what's lawlessness mean? Well, if you're lawless, it's kind of like uh, being an outlaw. You don't have laws that will regulate the way you live your life, like Jesse James and the others. You are lawless. You go through life making your own choices, your own decisions, never backing them on this law that's in here. 613, that may be only 150 or 200 apply to you. More than you need to know to drive a car on the streets today. There's less rules and regulations for salvation than to drive your car. Okay? So anyway, where this be? Where it be? Everyone that commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Now there's other uh, versions that'll say that uh, Sin is the transgression of the laws. Okay, instead of just saying sin is lawlessness, they'll say the sin is transgressing the laws. Transgressing, of course, meaning breaking or not doing. So anyway, where it be? For everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins. He came to take away sins. That's where this pardon and acquittal come in that they renamed as one of Zeus's naked dancing daughters. Grace. It actually means pardon and acquittal. You only need a pardon and acquittal if you are guilty of breaking a law. If you're guilty of murder and the governor of the state you live in or the president or the emperor grants you a pardon and acquittal. That means, though you did it, you're not going to be held guilty to the punishments of it. And that's what our king came for. He's, he's coming to give you a pardon and acquittal. He didn't bring none of Zeus's daughters for you that are nat naked and dancing. That's not what he brought. So you tell me, where it be here? You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. And he wants us to be just like him, so how can you be like him? Only without sin. If you have sin, you ain't like him. You ain't walked like he walked. And you're going to be one of those if you die when he raises you up. You're going to be there for judgment, not for life. Because everlasting life is the keeping of the commandments. Furthering here, tell me where it be. 
No one who abides in him sins. No one who abides in even the Jesus. Okay, but no one that abides in Yahshua, no one that abides in our King, the one who died and raised from the dead, no one who abides in him sins. Where it be. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. <laughs> so if you don't keep the commandments and you say you know him, well, you already was seen that you're a liar. Where it be. Little children, let no one deceive you. Little now why don't Paul Bagley and the others say these things to you? Little children, let no one deceive you. He who does right is righteous, and he is righteous. Now, in order to figure out what righteousness, you know, righteous is or righteousness, you need to look at Deuteronomy 6.25, and it'll tell you that it will be your righteousness if you keep the commandments. Okay, so when they say, oh, your righteousness is the dirty, well, that comes from you thinking you're righteous because you say you only do good, but it's okay to lay with a neighbor's wife or child or dog. Okay, that's okay to you. Well, that's your righteousness. That's like a, you know, a filthy rag, like a menstrual cloth. Your righteousness is. But when you practice keeping the laws, not committing fornication or adultery, that is righteousness. And those who practice righteousness are righteous. But your own righteousness, not our Father's righteousness, your own, the things you make up for yourself, making you think it's going to get you in the kingdom because you do it and you feel good doing it, that's your own righteousness. That's a filthy rags. He who does right is righteous as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil. Those who keep not the laws and commandments are of the devil. The things your preacher is teaching you to do makes you of the devil for the most part here. For the devil is sin from the beginning. The reason the son of Yahweh appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of Yahweh commits sin. No one born again commit sin. All I'm feeling good. Oh, I'm, I'm born again. I just got baptized and I went out and celebrated with a ham sub from Subway. <laughs> Going right back into the sin. Okay, because eating pork is unclean like 2 Corinthians 6 tells you. If you touch the unclean, you're not going to be welcomed or accepted. If you eat it, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, nor would I want to hug you. Anyway, no one born of Yahweh commits sin. For Yahweh's nature abides in him, or that person, and he cannot sin. Because he is born of Yahweh. But this, it may be seen, or by this it may be seen, who are the children of Yahweh and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not do right, or the commandments, the laws, live by this every word, is not of Yahweh. Nor he who does not love his brother, who does not keep the laws and commandments to his brother. He doesn't, he doesn't refrain from ste stealing his neighbor's you know, lawnmower, or, or his wife, or his children, or his animals. He doesn't refrain from these things because he thinks what he does is right. So anyway... There were a few scriptures. I'll write down where they're found in the descriptions below. Don't cheat and go there first. But after you take the quiz, where it be? Was you right? Was you wrong? Anyway, it's a, it's a great blessing to be here to play this game with you. And I hope we can do some more in the future. And ask your preachers. Go back and ask them. Now you've been baptized most likely or whatever because you may not even be looking at this if, if you haven't got some kind of religious background or affiliation or something, you know, uh, without a preacher baptizing you. But, you know, now you're baptized, you ask your preacher, say, okay, 
Now I'm baptized. What else is there to do but just believe? And if I'm to believe, what is it I'm to believe? And when you don't know, maybe you can show them. Till then, Shalom.